Hi, this is the second of several videos developing a quantum substratum. The goal is to visualize quantum theory in a way that is not weird. In the last video, we said that the message of entanglement may be that we live in a block universe. In this video, we'll dig deeper into the block universe and compare it with the idea that only the present moment exists. We'll look at block spacetimes in two, three, and four dimensions. And finally, we'll look at how our brains seem to be wired up to think in terms of a present moment, rather than a block universe. Let's get started. Let's say that we have a two-dimensional world where a two-dimensional person is exercising. This looks very much like a movie. In ancient times, movies came on film strips and a projector would highlight one frame at a time. Now let's start over and take a pair of scissors and cut out the first image frame. And the second. And the third. And the entire film strip. Our pack of frames makes a block. Each image has two dimensions, X and Y. Then to us, the depth of the pack is just another dimension in space, Z. But internally, inside the movie, that dimension is time, T. We can call our pack a block universe. Every frame, every moment in time exists. There is no special frame, no special moment that we can call now. Of course, we can choose a frame and highlight it with a projector or in some other way add our attention. And then we can call that moment the now. But in a block universe, there's nothing special about any given frame. This goes against common sense. We feel that there is a present moment, right now. It feels as if time flows. This moment disappears and a new one comes into being. We'll see a bit later that this feeling of a flow can be an illusion. In the previous video, we visualized a quantum substratum that could explain things like entanglement. It is really a surface in two dimensions that settles in external time. But we said that from an internal perspective, one of the spatial dimensions would be experienced as time. So from our external perspective, this is really a block universe where all moments coexist. Now, what would be the presentist view? Well, most of the block would not exist. Only a sliver, the present moment, would exist and that moment would change in time. Just like before, we can view this as a movie, now with only one dimension of space. The problem with entanglement is that a measurement creates an influence via an earlier interaction that is then felt by another measurement. How does this work with presentism? Well, it doesn't. By the time the first measurement happens, the interaction point no longer exists. Let's play that again. Now let's change the visualization a bit. We'll shrink the amplitude and change the substratum to look more like a green crystal. To create a boundary condition, or initial condition as you like, we'll bang the crystal with this sharp little tool. It looks like cracks spreading and interacting and spreading back some. The situation is essentially the same as for the nonlinear surface that we saw before. The atomic bonds in this crystal are different in the two directions, like two kinds of springs. Let's run that again. Let's add one more dimension of space. 
that's x, y, and z from our external viewpoint, but time t from an internal viewpoint. Again, let's bang the crystal with a sharp tool. And again, we get particle trajectories that look like cracks. And as the crystal settles, we see the influences spreading in both directions of internal time. We can imagine that complexity grows away from the initial bang. We get structures and maybe even people. Let's see if we zoom in. Yes, look at that. No, the bang doesn't have to happen at the edge. It could happen anywhere inside. We get two universes. Each has its own arrow of internal time in opposite directions. And along each arrow, both entropy and complexity will increase. People sometimes ask, why was entropy so low in the beginning? Well, in a block universe, it really becomes a non-question. Entropy would be low at the bang, and the bang could simply be located anywhere in the block. Also, we could have multiple bangs. What would happen if they overlap? Well, I'll leave that to my friends who write science fiction. Let's go back to the single bang. In a block universe, no moment has any special status. We can select one time slice and call it the now if we give it attention. In contrast, the presentist view is that what exists is only a single time slice. So we have seen examples with one and two dimensional space. We could continue with three dimensional space, and then the third dimension of this block would not be time t, but z. And we can now add a three dimensional person inside the block. But we still need to fit the internal time dimension somewhere. If we zoom out, we can then pull out a fourth dimension. It starts to look messy. We could then pretend that this hypercube is a piece of art and place it on a pedestal. And we could imagine that it's in somebody's four-dimensional living room. This would be four dimensions of external space, so the last coordinate we could call W. But we're not going to do any of that, because it starts to look too much like Animal House or Men in Black. However, it is important to make a clear distinction between the external point of view and the internal point of view. Physics is about the internal view, because it's where we make observations. It's all that we have access to. Metaphysics is about the external view. Physics rarely goes there. And the reason is that we could make many different theories without ever being able to verify which one is correct. For example, we saw earlier that in a simulated game of life, the internal characters at Bertun and Boris could never know if the world is simulated using vacuum tubes or transistors. Still, the external theories can be great as visualizations, and it can inspire new physics theories. Now, people learning physics often ask questions like, what if the universe is not expanding, but stuff is in it is shrinking? Or, what if time and the speed of light both are slowing down? Well, the student is taking an external point of view. The teacher may dismiss the question as not making sense, though it would be better to discuss the edge of knowledge. Let's look at some examples with three external dimensions. Internally, the third dimension would be experienced as time. Someone may ask, what happened before the Big Bang? Well, a physicist may simply say there is no before, because the time coordinate starts at the Big Bang. There's nothing outside the block. On the other hand, if the Big Bang happened in the center, the physicist, who takes an internal viewpoint, would still only consider the first arrow of time. But if we take an external viewpoint, there's a second arrow of time, and the before would then be another universe. 
Another question is whether the universe really is infinite or not. In a flat Friedman universe, it would be infinite, and the visible universe would just be a small part of it. However, the Friedman model is just a model. Our universe could very well be a finite block, like we have here, with the visible universe being a very tiny sliver. Then the Friedman model would be a very good approximation. And the truth is, we don't know if the universe is infinite or not. The block universe is difficult to accept for many people. It feels as if there's a special now. Why is this? Well, it seems that our brains work better if they model the world this way. The brain gets input from the eye, from things happening in the same slice of time, such as seeing a person right in front of us. We also have memories of what used to be an input, for example, seeing the person in a different position. We can focus our attention either on what's going on right now or on a memory. And it's very important to distinguish between the two because we need to react to what's going on right now. So the brain needs to treat the present moment as being very different from past moments. And it feels as if time has flowed from the very recent past to the present. But we should not insist that the world is like the model. When we do, then we get confused by things like quantum mechanics. We humans can have a narrow point of view, putting ourselves at the center. Here are four statements. The Earth is flat. The Earth is at the center of the universe. Humans are not animals. We exist only in the present moment. The past is just a memory. It makes sense for our brains to model the world this way. It makes us more fit. And therefore, we assume that's how the world is. But these are just conceits that we need to get rid of if we're going to understand the universe. One last point before we end. We have made the contrast between eternalism and presentism. But we can also imagine a growing block where there is a special now. The past still exists, but not the future. And the now doesn't have to be a straight line. It could be jagged, growing toward one interaction point in one place and toward another interaction point in another place. In our substratum, we could then imagine a kind of external or dualistic awareness that rides along on the now, experiencing the edge. The ride is stop and go, so the awareness would only experience internal time, not external time. However, the experience of the awareness would then be different from an internal or materialistic awareness. We would only experience an interaction point when it first happens in external time, but not the final interaction after the surface has settled. This could be a long discussion, and I'll save it for a later video. Let's just say that time is not an illusion, but that the flow of the present moment might be. So in this video, we compare the block universe to the view that only this moment exists. And we again compared internal and external views, which roughly divides physics from metaphysics. We also hinted at materialism and dualism using the blue blob of awareness. In a much later video, we'll see how the block universe fits with questions about free will, the heart problem, and creation. But before that, we'll continue to develop the quantum substratum with breathers, measurements, decoherence, and much more. I'll see you in the next video. For more videos, go to physicsisnotweird.com. And I'm Aiden Bernander.